as you can see, the mass times are slightly different this week because um, um, because Father Kevin has now arrived and is in the parish, and he'll be in charge of the parish after I depart um, this week. And um, I hope that um, that you, you you make him welcome, and, and particularly try and attend some of the weekday masses because because it can be a bit depressing when you first arrive somewhere if no one comes to the daily masses at all. Um, and so that'd be great to try and maybe come to an extra mass this week if you're able to. Um, please say uh, thank you for those who sent messages and cards to me. I really was moved by some of the things people wrote and, and um, I really appreciate um, many of the messages uh, that people have uh, left for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Back in um, seminary, we used to do this thing where we would practice homilies. And I can remember one of the other guys in my year used to get slated by the rest of us because he always quoted Chinese proverbs in his sermon. It was like a running thing. He always did a Chinese proverb. And the thing about it is, um, you know, quite often... They aren't even, they aren't Chinese, they aren't old, they were invented by somebody in the 19th century, and, um, you know, so, and you always use them. And one person was like, why don't you use something from a saint or something? But anyway, um, that's a roundabout way for, for me to quote my favourite one of the proverbs that he presented us with. And it's something like a dialogue, somebody's asking somebody when the best time to plant uh, an apple tree is or something, and it goes... If, if you ask me when the best time to plant the apple tree is, I would say 20 years ago. But the second best time is right now. And it's obviously it's kind of stupid in a sense because the second best time would probably be 19 years ago. Um, but it's making a point. It would have been better to have made the change you want to see in your life years ago. But you know, that didn't happen. But don't worry. The second best thing to do is to start today. And that's exactly how God sees us and our lives. If you've come to Mass 30 years, maybe 20 years, maybe 10 years, you will have heard today's Gospel at least once a year. It's the opening message of Jesus in St. Mark's Gospel, and it's also in St. Matthew's Gospel, and St. Luke has a version of it as well. Every year we get it. And in a way, every year it's fresh, it's, it's new. And it's saying, now, this very moment, this hour, this day, I'm calling you to repent, to turn your life more away from bad things, from sin, from attachments, and to believe the good news that I offer. Maybe last year you could have responded to this better than you did. Maybe over the last year you never went to confession, Maybe you never got round to changing that bad habit with the phone, with the TV, bad unhealthy friendship, whatever it might be. Maybe you didn't do that. But the second best time to do that is right now. As once again, Jesus stands before us, me and you, and says, the time has come. Repent and believe in the gospel. Has the time come? Has it finally come in your life, in my life? This is my last sermon here in the parish, so I do want to implore you seriously to heed these words. The time has come. We all know that if we end our lives in unrepentant mortal sin, we don't just go to purgatory for a long time. We are away from God forever in hell. And if we have our lives um, with a whole history of sins, it's going to be a massive obstacle to experiencing the lightness and joy Christ wants you to experience right now, today, in this life. A peace that the world can never give. The time has come, he says, and I hope it has come. Then he adds, the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. That second phrase, the kingdom of heaven is close at hand, is particularly relevant for us at Mass, at Holy Mass, because the Kingdom of Heaven is close at hand, literally. In a few moments' time, the veil that separates heaven and earth will be split apart. The angels will be present uh, the, as, the, as the consecration occurs. There's an intersection between the heavenly liturgy and what I'm doing through the words of consecration. 
um, the kingdom of heaven. Heaven itself is close at hand. You can't get closer to heaven than this. And so we repent, we go to confession, we try and change our lives on account of the proximity, the nearness to heaven, that we find ourselves at Mass. That's probably why we always begin the Mass with the I confess, because we really want to repent, because the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Jesus himself physically present in the Blessed Sacrament, not a piece of bread, but Jesus himself. Repent, change. Leave old habits behind and believe in the good news. For some people, in fact, the repentance part is actually the easy bit. They're able to go to confession well and, and, and overcome pride, get on their knees, say sorry. But the second part they find hard and believe in the good news. The good news that God has to offer us. Apparently that word, good news, gospel, evangelion, was a military term. You've probably all heard this. Bishop Barron mentions this a lot. Uh, evangelion was a word to describe when Rome had been victorious in some battle. You know, announcers would come to your, to your city and say, look, the evangelion of Caesar over the barbarians in uh, Germany. And... The Gospels use this phrase, good news, they steal that word to describe the victory that Jesus has won. Not over, not over barbarian tribes, but a good news, a victory that God in Christ has won something for us. He's won the greatest victory possible, the victory over sin, a victory that belongs to me and you if we remain his followers. But you know, that, that kind of idea that there is a good news, that there has been a victory, and that the victory has been won for me, it can be hard to accept. It implies, it implies accepting that reality, regardless of how you're feeling right now, whatever stuff is going on in your life. The idea, holding on to the truth that, that Jesus has won a victory for me, and that victory is, is real, and it, and it should have transformative effects in my life. That there's something amazing, good, that Jesus personally has won a victory for me. And he's put his Holy Spirit in my soul to let me begin experiencing this victory right now. Some people find that hard. It's easy to say, to repent and say sorry, but then to realize um, that the repentance isn't the end in itself. The repentance is about having faith um, that Jesus has won something more for you that's infinitely greater than the sins that you're leaving behind. Because if you're just leaving behind sins, after a while it gets tiring and you go back to the sin because there's nothing better than the sin on offer. But we have to believe that what Jesus has won for us and what's, what is possible for us to experience is his victory, which is so much more wonderful than sin. Even if your life is really bad, really crappy right now, we've got to hold on to the fact that the time has come. The kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. The best time, the best time to have planted the tree was 20 years ago. But the second best time is right now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's stand and pray.